Okay, so we were talking about boosting, right? And this is what we said. So in boosting, you run multiple, I mean, in all uh, boosting, stacking, and uh, uh, all types of ensemble. And what is the other one? Boosting, stacking, and bagging. Bagging. So all three, we run multiple models. Okay, so you see here, you run first model in boosting. It gives you an output, right? And this output is given as input to model 2. Then model 2 will create second output. This is again given as input to model 3, so on. Final output is what you get as the prediction. So it is like first model will say which one, okay? Which one is more accurate, So, right? So that's what I told you. If you have 10 problems to solve okay and first student will solve the all the 10 will solve all the 10 but will say that see i'm confident about third one but i'm not so confident about others okay so you will pass on uh, um, you will pass on the information to the second student okay and second student will solve and say first one said okay confident about third one i am confident about fifth one rest you take care Right, so finally, okay, each one will focus on the uh, class, you know, on uh, classification or regression, okay, which is uh, incorrect, right? So wrongly classified values will have higher priority, okay? So the, the ones where with values which were classified correctly, okay, will have lower priority and which were having low classify, low, you know, uh, accuracy or error, that will have higher priority for model two, okay? So that's how it works. And we will look at something called as ADA boosting here, okay? So ADA boosting, okay, is similar to random forest, but in random forest is more like your bagging, okay? So a random forest is uh, bagging where you, you know, you take average of all, but ADA boosting, okay, okay, takes input. Okay, so for example, here you have an example here. Okay, and this is very similar to what we did yesterday, right? So let's say this is uh, three features, okay? Chest pain, blocked arteries, and patient weight. And then you have, this is in um, uh, pounds. And this is whether this person, you know, is you're predicting whether this person will have heart disease or not, right? So initially, okay, we create sample weight. Okay, so sample weight, first time it's all equal, okay? And the sample weight will vary as we go along, okay? So, okay, so you start with this, okay? And it says create first stump. First stump is like one decision tree, one node and two values. That is called stump, okay? So, okay, so how, how do we create that stump, okay? So looking at the data set, if you see that, if you're predicting the chest pain will lead to heart disease and no chest pain will not release to, no chest pain means no heart disease. So we're creating first stump, okay? So here, looking at the data set, you got, uh, there are five values which has heart disease, right? So if you go back here, so you have one, two, three, four. No, okay, we have only four here. Okay, but if you see chest pain, you have one, two, three, four, five. So we're talking chest pain, yes. Chest pain, yes, there are five. And chest pain, no, you have only three, right? So if if you say the chest pain <clears throat> will lead to heart disease, how many values have you got it right? So this yes is yes, one correct, two correct, three correct. Okay, so three correct and two wrong, right? Two chest pain has is, I mean, you have no heart disease, right? So if you talk about chest pain, yes, okay, then you have three correct and two wrong. And if you talk about chest pain, no, okay, so no, this is wrong, right? You expect no heart disease, so you have yes. So this is one wrong, no, no. So one wrong, two correct. So if you go back here, so this is what we have done here, okay? So chest pain, yes, leading to the heart disease, three correct and two wrong. And here you have two wrong and one correct. 
Similarly, you calculate for all the other values. So in weight, we have taken as 176. Now, we are saying, okay, generally we take somewhere in between, but yes, I mean, you can take any value here, right? And the thing is, you start with any value, but as you go along, this will be more refined. So we take 176. Now, if you are saying that more than 176, this is our hypothesis. So our hypothesis says is, if your weight is more than 176, you, you, you will have heart disease. So if you come back here, okay, more than one, 176 heart disease, so this is correct. One correct, two correct, three correct. Okay, so we'll look at only yes first. So more than 175. So more than 175, okay. So only three. So you got three correct and zero wrong. If you go here, this is what you will see. Three correct and zero wrong. And then less than 176, no heart disease. So if you go here, okay, less than, so this is, so this is wrong, right? This also has heart disease. So this is one wrong classification. No, 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 right? So four no's and, is it four no's? Yes. Four no's and one incorrect. I mean, so four correct and one incorrect. Four correct and one incorrect. And then you calculate, so, told you right we can use Jenny index okay uh, to calculate the uh, how well they have classified in this case uh, you know these two are classification problem and this is more like a regression problem right but we are we are uh, in the decision tree is all about yes no right that's when you create two branches so we calculate Jenny index Jenny index is one minus okay sum of square of the correct values so if you see in the first block here okay you have total eight values out of eight values how many you got right five right so total for you know chest pain you have eight values and you got three plus two five okay and how many you got wrong three so you get one minus sum of Correct by total value square plus incorrect by total value square. So 5 by 8 whole square plus 3 by 8. Okay, whole square. Okay, this is whole square. I missed to write whole square. And then you get Gini index of 0.47. Okay, so that's why that's how you have to calculate Gini index for all. Okay, so here you have 0 0.47, 0 0.5, and 0 0.2. Once you have Gini index, okay. So look for the one which has the lowest uh, Gini index. Lowest Gini index typically means there is more chance of uh, that, you know, that has classified it correctly, right? So higher the Gini index, your, your error in the model is high, okay? So among the above three, okay, the, the number, the weight one has done better job in terms of prediction, right? So that's why we start with uh, that patient weight. So next step is to calculate the weight of this stump. How much weight should be given to this stump? Okay. So the total error for a stump is the sum of weights associated with incorrectly classified sample. So in this case, it made only one incorrect classification, correct? First, yes part, three out of three. Second part, one wrong out of five. So the total error in this case is one by eight, one out of eight. Okay. So... <clears throat> So the amount of say, amount of say means when you, now see we have created one stump, right? Now we have to create second set of stumps. So this is output of first student. This is output of first student. Now we have to, so first student will say that, see, you know, I am uh, confident about weight, but I'm not so confident about uh, other two, which is chest pain and blocked arteries, correct? So if if you are to classify, let's assume that you know you are you are the model here. So when you pass on this to the next step, you will say, "See, I'm more confident about this one, right? Because here the accuracy is higher than the other two, right? But how much more? Ninety-seven percent more. So you say that I'm ninety per ninety-five percent confident about this one. I am ninety-seven percent confident about this model." I am correct. Did you understand so far? So you will say that I am 95, 97% confident about 
weight, but I'm not so confident about other two. Yes, each stump will focus on only one analysis. So, you know, so amount. Now, <clears throat> the more confident you are, less time other person will spend on it. That's the importance of error. Okay, more confident you are, less time other other model. If I say I'm 100% sure, then the other model will spend zero, zero second, right? When you say yeah. I'm very sure about the first one, 100% sure, first answer is correct, then the other student will not even look at it because you're 100% sure. When you say I'm 90% sure, you know, other student will probably spend some less time. When you say 50% sure, they'll spend more time on it. Right. So in this case, you know, we got 97 error uh, rate for this jump. So that means when you create the next one, okay, it will it should have less weight. So now earlier we started with sample weight of one by eight, right? Now we'll have to create weight for each of these. Okay. So this is the sample weight that we had in the beginning. Now this sample weight will be modified. So we say new sample weight. Okay. So we create new sample weight. A new sample weight is sample weight, which is the previous one that is 1 by 8. Okay. Into e power amount of say. Okay. Higher the say, less weight it will be. So see here, 1 by 8 into e power 0. 0.7, which is... 0.33. Okay, 2.64 into 1 by 8. So 0.33. Okay. So 0.33 is the weight of your uh, patient. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. Now you look at the incorrectly classified. Okay. Incorrectly classified data set. Which one is that? One, one got incorrectly classified, right? One one row, right? Out of eight, one row got incorrectly classified. So the weight of that is going to be minus amount of say. Okay. So it's going. So here it, you get 0 0.05. Okay. So now you look at new weight. Point zero five, mm -hmm. and this is the one incorrectly classified, right? One sixty seven. So 167, you will add the higher weight because in the next iteration, this row will will be handled more, right? See, so the in the I told you right, the one that is wrongly classified will have higher weight. So second student, when they they have to go through the entire model, entire problem. So the the one that you are not sure of, that model has to spend more time on it. So right now only one model is classified incorrectly. One row is classified incorrectly, which is 167, this one. So this got your you know new weight as 0.33. Others have got 0 0.050505. 0 0 0 now if you add all of them together, you should get 0.68. Uh, I mean you get 0.68 in this case, but it should be one, right? Total weight should be one. Percentage should be hundred. So we have to normalize it. You have to multiply it so that it becomes one total okay so you normalize it okay so this becomes everybody everything set should increase isn't it so yes. 0 0.05 became 0 0.07 and there's a formula here okay so let's say see if i tell you i get 5 out of 20 how much should be out of 100 5 by 20 is okay how much is out of 100 20. Sorry? 20, you have to yes. multiply by 5, right? So 25 by 100, right? So same thing, okay? So it's like 0 0.05 out of 68, 5 out of 68, right? So you have to convert into, okay? So 0 0.05 by 0 0.68 is 5 by 68. Hmm. Okay? So, if I have to show you, five divided by sixty-eight. Okay, point zero seven. This is the percentage out of one, right? So this is value out of one. So we have to make out of one. So it became 
0 0.07. So everything else will become 0 0.07. Your 0.33 will be 33 divided by 68. So this is how the so 0.48 or 49 you can say. So this is how you can extend, right? You can convert. So total weight should be one. So we call this normalized weight. Now this is ready for next, uh, uh, you know, for the next uh, run. Okay. So, um, okay, I, okay. So then exactly same thing you will repeat. Okay. So this time you will have, okay. Now, okay. So I think this, this thing is not there mentioned here. But what happens, I'll tell you. Let me open Excel and show you. One second. Let me quickly copy this, okay? So, you have here chest pain, blocked arteries, okay? Chest pain, blocked arteries, and you have um, a patient weight. Okay, and then you're predicting heart disease. Okay, so here you have yes, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, and here you have uh, yes, no, yes, yes, no, no, yes, yes, no, no. Yes, yes. Okay, here you have two yes, one no, then three yes. Two yes, one no, then three yes, then one no, and last one is yes. Here you have two zero five one eighty, two zero five one eighty, then you have two ten one sixty seven, two ten one sixty seven. 156, 125, 168, 172. Okay, so these are the values that we have, and we have calculated weight as uh, 167 years, right? This is 0 0.49485. Okay, and everything else is 0. 07. So see, you are, you are saying that, you know, only this one I was not able to classify correctly. So this has higher weight and everything else should have lower weight because others I was able to 
classify correctly. Correct? So yes. next you have to calculate cumulative weight. What is cumulative weight? You add all of these together. Oh, so nice. you will have first you'll be this, then second one will be previous value plus this value. Okay, and then so you get one. Okay. Is it correct? No, it shouldn't. So this one is F3, F2 minus E3. Okay, in fact, what I'll do here, okay, see, because we have not correct calculated, right? Instead of doing 0 0.07, okay, I will um, say here um, 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.68. That makes matter sense. Okay, so I will do same thing till here. I'll do same thing here okay and here it is uh your the save was 0 0.33 right 0 0.68 oops equal to so In fact, this what happened? Uh, point zero five, right? Not point five. It's point zero five. Point zero five, right? Okay. So now you get one here. Okay. So cumulative is one. Okay. Perfect. So this is, we are still in the first step. Now when you create the second step, okay, you will get same thing here. Okay. You will get uh, out the data is same okay the problem you will not change right when you give to your friend problem is same but what happens here in this is the second iteration <laughs> so in second iteration in fact okay now we need so you have eight values here right we need to provide eight values only we need to provide eight values only but which one so we will generate a random number between 0 and 8 random number between 0 and 8. Okay. So 0, uh, we have to generate random number. Why? Because uh, okay, random number will tell us which rows to take as input here. Okay. So we need exactly 8, but based on the random number here. So, okay. So I'm going to create here. Rand, random will generate random number between 0 and 1. Okay. So I'll say this. So you need 10, uh, eight random numbers. Okay. okay. So eight random numbers. Okay. I'll move them here. Okay. And I'm going to do control C and I'm going to say control V. Okay. So these are random numbers between one and zero or, okay. Okay. Now you see. 0 0.035, where does it fall? This is 0.7, right? So this is where it falls, correct? So this row will be selected. I'll put one, okay, to, to include or exclude. 0 0.96, where does 0 0.96 fall? Here, correct? Mm. So this will be included. Yes. 0 0.9, 0 0.9 will fall. Here, right? Yeah. 0.9 is included. 0 0.05 here. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be two times. Okay. 0.5, then you have 0.236. 236 okay. is here. Yeah, yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. 0.36 is here, right? 0.236, correct. 
This is 2, 2. So, it yeah, should two, be two. here. Right? Then point zero 4. Zero 4 is again here. Again. So three times. Okay? Now, point three nine. Three nine is again, again here. here. Yes, 2. Right? 2. Point two nine. Same. Same. Three. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So, see, I mean, this is unusually very high. Okay? This should not be 3, but that's okay. We'll go by random number. Now, this will definitely have highest because, see, the range here is high, right? 0 0.2 to 0 0.7. Isn't it? So, if you see technically, even if you do it one more time, every time this will become the highest value. Yes or no? This is becoming highest because... The range here, you see, you see everywhere it is 0 0.070707 range, but here it is 0.5 range. Correct? So most of the time, values will fall into this row. And this row is what we want because this is what is incorrect. Isn't it? So now when you create your this one, okay, so you will have this part repeating three times. One time, two times, three times. And this will also repeat three times okay so one two three now these two will repeat one time and now your weight will be again equal weight see this was just to calculate to see which one should go to the next round okay what it means is the ones that we left out we are very sure about its accuracy so we don't have to worry about it we have to worry more about the ones that we got three so these three this one okay is more focused and then again you wait will be one by eight again you calculate same thing okay and you keep doing it did you understand yes okay and when you are plotting the first one, this is this is what we do. So we started with three stump, right? We started with how many stump? Three stump. Three stump. But weight equal to the weight greater than one seventy six is the one that we will fix it here. Weight greater than one seventy six. This is the first you know node that we create. This will give us out of these three again we will get one stump. Okay, that will become your second stump, third, like that. And this path is saved. So it's like you said that, you know, I got this one correctly. I'm confident about this. So you'll say, okay, this is the answer. I'm going to put it in the answer sheet anyway. Then this second round will give you one more stump. Third will give you one more. And you keep developing it. And the path that you see, this is saved. So from first round, this is what we get. So we say, if it is greater, yes, then heart disease. Because we are classification, right? So we say heart disease. Okay, if it is no, okay, this is no heart disease. Okay, so we are going to save this. And this will also give us one stump. Same thing you create again, okay? This will again give us some stump. And that will be your second. Okay, so this is how we are using input from one model to the input to the second. So see, uh, what we discussed yesterday was Gini index also decides. So Gini index, what we calculated, okay, we didn't calculate weights there because weights is not required. Okay, so see, when you are giving this input to this, it becomes boosting. Boosting because we are focusing on weights and then we are deciding, oh, this is what we need to choose. We didn't talk about random forest. Random forest, each of these steps are independent. Okay, each of these steps are independent. So first you created weight. Here you might create something else, then something else, and then you take average. Okay, so Gini index will decide which node should come first. So, you know, weight equal to 76 would have come even, um, uh, you know, if you run it, this was, I think this was the first one. If you go through the video, yesterday's video, this was selected first one, uh, you know, weight 76 because this has lowest Gini index, right? Gini in, lowest Gini indicates that more accuracy and that's when you will, you know, you will take as first node. But here you are giving input to the another, other node with weights, okay? So that's why we say boosting algorithm. 
we are running same algorithm which is decision tree itself but input from first model goes as uh, sorry output of first model goes as input to the other model and which will help us to focus on some data set and not focus on other the ones that are left out okay these four that we left out you see they you know this got them correct one that we are including here okay is mostly that was incorrectly predicted or incorrectly classified okay so this is how your boosting works okay so this uh, uh, weight will decide okay which values now if you try with another random value okay if we again try with random value again here let's say again i create random value okay we'll generate this random value and we'll say control c control v 0.29 is 29 is here right you see yes one point three is also here you see two point eight five eight five plus right yes. so it is going to be here then five six is again here three right six five is again here four. right four four is again Five. here right three one Six. is again here point zero four first. zero four is here right no first one above, above, first. so you see this time six times this got okay this will always be highest okay because the gap here is more and this is what we got incorrect right so we are saying so you know this guy will spend six you know six six hours out of eight hours on solving this problem only okay so that's how you're able to boost your accuracy okay so we can see how to um, you know um, run this running is simple right running does not require much effort so we go back to our algorithm where is this it's here okay we are here and what i'll do okay this also i'll put it here now you can guess which library will have ada boost which one will have Ensemble only will have no all these are ensemble algorithm, right? Random forest, ADA boosting. Okay, so from SK learn ensemble import ADA ADA boost classifier. This is a classifier example, isn't it? So classifier. Okay, so same thing if you have to do for reg uh, regression, okay, we use the error residual error value. Okay, you make prediction. Yes, using yes. one step and then difference so instead of looking at yes no we're looking at the error okay, residues yes. okay so a classifier and then you build your classifier equal to ada post classifier and how many estimator you want to give so what happens is okay number of estimators will tell you maximum how many steps you want to run maximum how many students you want to solve this problem how many models okay how many trees you want to solve this so if i get an answer before seven let's say 100 percent and it's 100 percent, it will stop but if you do not get an answer it will go up to seven steps so how many times should it do it depends upon the number of estimators you give okay now you run it okay probably it's running different file taking time let it take time
Okay. So now we got our answer. Okay. See, this is giving us 91% accuracy. Okay. So, yes. So with that, we complete our classification discussions. Okay. Um, so tomorrow we'll talk about principal component analysis. What is PCA? Okay. PCA model is about selecting the right number of column. So see what we discussed in the multiple linear regression, right? We have multiple values and we were looking at the X which are having impact on Y, right? And the one with had least impact we are removing. So, so same thing we are doing in PCA. PCA tells you, okay, you have multiple X. See, the problem with having multiple features is that it's going to make your program more complex. It's going to take time. Okay, not only that, the it's like if if a feature, see, when you the complexity increases by the number of features, right? So if you have, if you add one extra features, the complexity will be increased, right? But what PCA says is if that component is not contributing much, if the accuracy, the impact to the prediction, uh, the impact that is created to the prediction is 0.5, okay, then we can ignore it. Okay, then we don't have to ignore it. So if you remove even one feature, your performance will be much faster. So PC is about performance versus accuracy kind of, you know, you are doing it. Okay, so your accuracy will also impact, right? Uh, and your, your um, um, performance will also improve and without much impact on your accuracy. So we are improving, but not affecting the accuracy. That's the goal. Okay, accuracy should not get impacted, but efficiency should improve that's the job of pca so we'll talk about that tomorrow so with this we complete our um, classification so we have seen regression algorithms we have seen classification algorithms you know how these algorithms work now right and then um, cl clustering is next thing that we'll have to do after pca